What's going on guys? I hope everybody's having a great day. I just got home from work, so if I look dead and tired behind the eyes, that's why. Been having a stressful time at work here as of late, so it's kind of nice to be home in the comforts of my own, my own house. So, I've actually got a beer review, my first ever beer review. I've never done one of these before, but I've always wanted to. This is something I've always wanted to get into. But before we get into it, I want to give a shout out to three channels here on YouTube. First one being Greg's Beer Reviews. He is a beer reviewer, and he's been doing this a very long time here on YouTube. And I think that he deserves way more subscribers than he has. He is just, uh, I mean, I out of all the beer reviewers that I watch here on YouTube, he's probably the one I watch the most. This guy is able to make me interested in trying out a beer that doesn't sound like something that I would like. So definitely go subscribe to Greg's Beer Reviews. He is just a fantastic beer reviewer. Second is I want to give a shout out to Cult Classic Cage. He is a phenomenal YouTuber who is, I think he's going to get big here on YouTube. He is just very, he is just a very good speaker. He talks mainly about video games and movies and stuff like that. I think it's mainly just video games. I know he did like Halloween Kills and he showed off some Michael Myers stuff and whatnot which is how I found his channel. But uh, I think I watch I think I watch every video he puts out. He is just such a, an amazing speaker and such a good content creator. He's going to go places here on YouTube. So I just want to go ahead and give a shout out to him. And third and final is an old, a friend of mine, Dylan Wolf. Now, he actually had a YouTube channel years ago called uh, Cult of Metal. He's a big metalhead and whatnot. He's probably a bigger metalhead than I am. Um, he does a lot. On his new channel, because Cult of Metal doesn't exist anymore. He's just he just goes by Dylan Wolf now. You've probably seen him in my comment section. Uh, he's an old friend of mine, and he uh, he he mainly does videos on heavy metal and video games as well, like PS2 games and whatnot. He's pretty cool. There's a lot of nostalgia baked on his channel, but it's also he's also a very good speaker, just like Cult Classic Cage. So I know he just recently showed off all his favorite PlayStation 2 games, which I got a big kick out of that video. So it's good to see it's good to see him back as well he's been a friend of mine here you probably remember him from a video we collabed on quite a few years ago but uh it was our top five favorite horror movies he was my special guest on that video so he might he might be a little familiar to you guys but uh yeah that's it for my shout outs let's go ahead and get into the beer now this beer i have is an ipa i like ipa i understand a lot of people don't they're not for everybody they're an acquired taste i get it but I like IPA, so let's keep it friendly in the comments. Because IPA is a very, very touchy subject for a lot of people. But we've got Two-Hearted Ale from Michigan. This is out of Michigan. And it's an American IPA brewed and bottled by Bell's Brewery Incorporated in Comstock, Michigan. Brewed with 100% Centennial hops, this Bell's... Sorry, it's fucking dark. I couldn't read it. This Bell's uh, American IPA is named after the majestic Two-Hearted River in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Bursting with hop aromas, I think that's how you pronounce that, ranging from pine to grapefruit and per perfectly balanced with a malt backbone. This beer is well suited for adventures everywhere. Well, it's definitely probably not best suited for everybody because it seems to me most about everybody I know hates IPA. I think I'm the only person I know that actually likes IPA. Let's go ahead and pour this bad boy into this. All right, so that's what it looks like. It looks pretty good. It looks very citrusy, which I like. But I have a wide taste. I've, been, I've, I've tried to expand my taste as much as I can, but let's go ahead. I'll give you my first impressions. Never had one of these before. I like it. I genuinely like that. And I got a guy that just constantly shits on IPA. Like, he's, he's on my Facebook and he... Uh, he just post about how IPA is shit and anybody that drinks IPA is a fucking retard and whatnot. Man, 
Fuck you, dude. IPAs are really good. I fucking genuinely like this. It's got a citrusy flavor, but unlike a lot of IPAs that I've had, let me just double check that and confirm it. It's not as strong. The citrus, the citrusy taste is actually not that not as strong as other IPAs that I've had. I live about five minutes from the Calf Killer Brewery. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Calf Killer beers. They make a lot of like IPA citrusy kind of stuff, and they've actually not had a whole lot of beers as well that have impressed me. I think the only one that's really impressed me from Calf Killer is Evil Ass, and that's about it. I tried the J Henry. I think it's shit. But, uh, no, this is definitely not a bad beer at all. I just don't get people's issue with IPAs, man. This thing is fucking killer. Uh, definitely there's the bottle. It's got a fishy on it. I definitely, if you are somebody that likes IPAs and you like the citrusy taste, if you're hardcore into the citrusy taste for this thing, or for IPAs in general, maybe pass on this one if you are somebody that has to have the citrusy taste as strong as you possibly can. But in this, the citrus taste is kind of weak. And that's actually not a bad thing. I mean, it's not, it's not weak where it's like you can barely tell. I mean, it's there. It tastes citrusy. It's just not as strong. This is not a very strong citrusy beer. And I think that's, I like it. I don't like when IPAs are just over the top citrusy. I think this might be, as far as IPAs and ales and all that, I'm not even a fan of ales as it is. Ales are really not my thing. I much prefer lagers. But for an ale and for an IPA, this thing is pretty killer. I like it. I enjoyed it. I give this beer... Hmm. On a scale of 1 to 10, what could I give this? I'm going to say, I'm going to be really nice. I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10. It just doesn't, uh, it's not the best IPA I've ever had. But it's not a bad one either. This is a good IPA. Very, very good IPA. And I know people that hate IPAs are probably going to type in the comments, You need to hear IPA! So... Like I said, let's try to keep that to a bare minimum and just enjoy just enjoy the beers that you like. I try to expand my taste because there's quite a few beers I've had that are pretty nasty. Uh, this doesn't include Bud Light because we all, you know, universally that's known as a below subpar beer. But uh, a lot of people fry upon American beer as well. When you have stuff like this, maybe if you don't like IPL or IPL, IPAs, there's Brownstone Ale and there's lots of lagers from smaller companies here in America that probably get overshadowed by the big companies like Budweiser and Coors and Yingling. I get people aren't fans of those. I can take them or leave them really, but uh, like I said, I'm getting off topic. This was actually a really good IPA and... Like I said, if you don't like IPA, stay away from it. It's, IPA is not your thing. Stay away from this. If you're a fan, a fan of IPA and you prefer a stronger citrusy taste, pass on this. If you're like me, doesn't like the citrusy taste too much, but likes just enough, definitely go out and try this and buy it. So, yeah. 8 out of 10. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. What you guys think? Do you want to see more beer reviews or do you want me to not continue with this? So... Leave it down in the comments. Thank you guys for watching, and I'm out. Peace.